Tech, and then I saw the video from, um, I think it was the Mountaineer Cup, mm -hmm. your squat, and uh, yeah. we talked about it a little bit before, but um, you said that actually coming back from that kind of injury is actually worse than the actual injury itself. Yeah, there was actually no pain. I mean, I know when I when I hit the floor that I moaned a little bit, but then Doug Furness, who you know, probably one of the guys I respect most most forever in powerlifting, um, he calmed me down. Cause he, I mean, he's been through it all. I mean, from uh, riding rodeo when he was a kid to playing football to wrestling, and he just calmed me down and. I realized there was no pain when it when a tendon. There was a mid tendon rupture, so it snapped right in the middle, not from one end or the other. Um, everything just kind of goes numb. But I'll tell you what: if if I didn't know how to dump the squat and get out of there, that I learned from the old time guys like Bill Sino, Dennis Reed, Ernie France, then because uh, the spotters didn't have time to grab it because I did it on the way down, I I, I w could have been crippled or dead. Now, like, how did you learn how to dump? I mean, is that something that was standard in the old school training? Yeah, yeah, that you just got to, you had to learn how to get out of there if something happened. Right. So I just kind of threw the, the knee that blew, I threw the whole hip and side into it and dumped that side and then dove out. And I didn't even realize I took out the squat racks and everything until I watched the video myself. Right. I actually I saw, I've seen it a couple of times, and it, it's one of, I don't even like watching it because it, you know, anybody that listens to homes, that, yeah. you know, it brings children. Well, what's funny, when you say, uh, you know, I don't even like watching it, but everyone that watches it, they, like, turn their head like a train wreck, and then they look and watch play, hit play again. It's like a train wreck, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just gotta, and it's like that old picture um, my high school coach put up in the gym where that guy was warming up, and I don't even know if you know who the guy was, where he, he went right down on his knee. Snapped his leg? Yeah. Mike Parada, and I think it happened in Vegas. Yeah, my coach put that right above my squat rack when I was in eighth grade. Lovely. I, I used to walk around to the gym to the guys that had knee surgery and show them that one. Yeah. I mean, I, I literally didn't go back to the gym for a couple <laughs> weeks because I just couldn't couldn't deal with that picture right in front of my face. Mm -hmm. And I, all it said was, don't don't squat without a spotter. <laughs> How about it? Back to, back to my injury, the, the, I, the reason I did, I, I think I got the injury in the first place, was when I, I took it off. I usually, everyone has their little ritual they go through and stuff, and I set up too fast. And usually I end up, right before I go, I usually adjust my feet and wiggle them in. And I left my right leg out too far, so I went down, that knee came in, and it, it just snapped. We had people in, like, the third row that heard it snap, and it didn't come back to the contest. Yeah. I think my, I think Angela Pulis was there, and... Uh, yeah. He, I, I think he went to the hospital with you. I wasn't sure if he did or not. He might have. Yeah. He, might have. he called me on the way there. So I was like, mm. I'm like, all right. Who so ever showed you his deer tattoo? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. You see, you're missing out. He's got a picture of a buck right on his chest. I believe it. tattoo ever. <laughs> Sweetest as well. I believe he's engaged now. Yep. Yep. He's engaged. A miracle for him. Oh, holy moly. If you ever saw, well, you did see him through part of college, but I was like their father, like part of the time. It was horrible. It was, it was like it's probably the way you feel like when you were when you go traveling with Kirk. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just, you just shake your head and just, and just. You know something's gonna happen. You just do damage control. Yeah, yeah, because it's gonna happen, and there's nothing much you can do, and uh, it's, it's like, and. and you just can't stop it, so mm -hmm. just smile. I'll tell you what, though, as, as much as Kirk would party and have a good time, when he hit the platform, you could never, ever bet against him. Right, yeah. Yeah, I, I had the, I, I probably the, the best meet or the, the biggest opportunity I ever had was competing in the 96 USPS seniors in Philadelphia. I, real, I mean, frankly, I didn't even belong there, but... Uh, I was invited. If you qualified, you belong there. Well, I don't even know if there's, was there, what, what kind of qualifying total was there? I don't even know. It well, was, considering it was you, it was probably really low, but. <laughs> I competed earlier. With that, that big bench and deadlift you had back then. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, big, oh. What? <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I remember a couple of years ago. I think it was the last time I talked to you. You said uh, 
you said uh, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be a good lifter. You're going to, you're going to squat over eight. You're going to bench over six, and you're going to pull six. <laughs> I wasn't too off. <laughs> hey now. Uh, but that that USBF seniors was great. It was uh, I think that was the contest you went to 242 for the first time. Yeah. Kirk was at 75. Uh, and it was like you, Douglas, and Harris was at 220, and Austin was there. It was just a. Uh, James Anderson benched 710 or 11 there. Right. Yeah, and a t-shirt, then ripped it off. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he told Shane Hammond before after Wayans, I think he weighed in at like 390 something. He said, guys, come here to my room. I want to show you these new bench shirts I got. And we're like, what? So he took us to our room, his room. And he, he said, they come in packets of three now. So he went into a bag, and it was a, a Tane's BVTs or Fruit of Looms, a package of three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Shane giving him a lift off in the warm-up room, and he, he yelled out, he yelled to Shane, get out of my way, fatso. <laughs> yep. He would take like a little over 400, a little over 500, around 600, and that would be it. And then go out and open with... Yeah, the, no wrist uh, wraps, just gold watch, just sunglasses on. Yeah, and he'd, I remember him sitting in the uh, sitting in the auditorium. I'll be right there. Yeah, he'd be sitting in the back with his legs up, <laughs> arm around somebody. He had a little kid walk up to walk up with him for to help him out. Mm -hmm. I don't He's think definitely he, a freak. I don't think the uh, the referees were prepared for that. No, who? No one is. Yeah, it's just like he's bigger than he's, he's a monster, and then his personality is just as big as he is. Yep, I think Yuri Spinoff from the Ukraine guest lifted at that contest. Yep, exactly. Raw in the in his red squats, his red singlet. Yep, and he uh, he squatted 87. He got a red light because when he got the down signal, he moved his finger on the bar. That kind of stuff is a little ridiculous. Yeah, I actually have pictures of that. I have pictures of that and your lifts, and uh, I just sat, after I got done lifting, I just sat there and just took pictures like a madman. Yeah, it's pretty cool when you're on your way up, because, you know, like I said, that's why I go to all the world, because I'm a fan of powerlifting. I like the lifting. I like the atmosphere, no matter what it is. Yeah. I mean, earlier in the year was my first, like, big, well, I would call it big event, mainly because it was the event Shane went, Hammond did his 1,008. Uh, he was at the Junior Nationals, also in Philadelphia, and and that kind of got me. Kirk was there, and and Shane did his lift, and that just got me like spurred on to to, to just move to that next level and just and just be there. If there's a big event I could get in the car and go to, I was there. You know? mm -hmm. That's what makes you better. Yeah. And Thanks, thanks again, again for joining, joining us here on Pure, Pure Powerlifting, Powerlifting Podcast. Podcast. Come, Come back, back next, next Monday, Monday for part four of our podcast with Ed Cohen. Cohen. Thanks, Thanks to my co-host, Jason, Jason Beck, Beck, our sponsors, sponsors Titan Sports, Sports Systems, Garage Inc., Powerlifting.com, and Brown's Gym. Come back next week for the Pure Powerlifting Podcast. Now, for a preview of next week's podcast with Ed Como. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> There's not enough dye in the world. If I'm capable of getting a 1,000-pound squat, that's what I want to get. In August, I'll probably do the USPF Seniors again. It probably will be my last one. I don't give a crap who's competing with me, against me, anything. Yeah. Um, I've always been a pretty good supporter of Inzer. He would be probably the biggest influence. I mean, I, I like the way Louie does stuff.